Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. Okay, lesson nine, summarizing bivariate categorical data. Classwork, recall from your work in grade six and grade eight that categorical data are data that are not numbers. Bivariate categorical data results from collecting data on two categorical variables, bivariate. In this lesson, you will see examples involving categorical data collected from two survey questions. Exploratory challenge one, superhero powers. Superheroes have been popular characters in movies, televisions, television, books, and comics for many generations. Superman was one of the most popular series in the 50s, while Batman was a top-rated series in the 1960s. Each of these characters was also popular in movies related, or I'm sorry, movies released between 1990 and 2013. Other notable characters portrayed in movies over the last several decades include Captain America, She-Ra, and the Fantastic Four. What is special about superhero? A superhero. Is there a special superhero power that makes these characters particularly popular? High school students in the United States were invited to complete an online survey in 2010. Part of the survey included questions about superhero powers. More than 1,000 students responded to the survey that included a question about a favorite superhero power. Researchers randomly selected 450 of the completed surveys. A rather confusing breakdown of the data by gender was compiled from the 450 surveys. So there's these five categories. 100 students indicated their favorite power was to fly. 49 of those students were female. 131 students selected the power to freeze time as their favorite power. 71 of those were males. 75 students selected invisibility as their favorite power. 48 of those students were females. 26 students indicated super strength as their favorite power. 25 of those students were male. And finally, 118 students indicated telepath telepathy <laughs> as their favorite power. 70 of those students were female. Exercises one through four. Several superheroes portrayed in movies and television series had at least one extraordinary power. Some superheroes had more than one special power. Was Superman's power to fly the favorite power of his fans, or was it his super strength? Would females view the power to fly differently than males, or in the same way? Use the survey information given in example one to answer the following questions. One. How many more females than males indicated their favorite power is telepathy? Telepathy. So, 118 students indicated telepathy was their favorite power. 70 were female. So, 118 minus 70 would give me 48 males. How many more females than males indicated their favorite power is telepathy? Well, 70 were female, 48 were male. So you'd say 70 minus 48, and that would be 22. 22 females. How many more females indicated their favorite power is telepathy? I'd say 22 females, 22 more were female that indicated telepathy was their favorite. Number two says, how many more males than females indicated their favorite power was to fly? So we need to find flying was right here. 100 students indicated their favorite power was to fly. 49 were female. So 100 minus 49 is, so that'd be the total minus female equals the number of males, and that'd be 51 males. Okay, and it says how many more males than females indicated their favorite power was to fly. So 51 
minus 49 is two more. Two more males indicated their favorite power was to fly. Okay, page two brings us to problem number three. It says, write a survey, qu write survey questions that you think might have been used to collect this data. So if I go back to the prior page, well, what was the information? Um, what was their favorite power? Okay, some students selected their power to freeze, select invisibility as their favorite power. So one question was asking what their favorite power was. And the other one was asking gender. Okay, so that's what we're going with. So here's what it would look like. Okay, so one question could be what is your gender and then it marked male, female, and you just check one. And then if you could possess just one superpower, what would it be? And then the five uh, options that they had to choose from. Okay, number four, how do you think the 450 surveys used in example one might have been selected? You can assume that there were 1,000 surveys to select from. Okay, and in gathering data and conducting a survey, uh, one really important concept is to uh, use random sampling, random selection. So a process involving random selection is needed. You can't just take the first so many people or the last so many people. It needs to be random for it to um, represent the data well. Okay, moving on to exploratory challenge two, a statistical study involving a two-way frequency table. The data in example one prompted students in mathematics class to possess a statistical question. Do high school males have different preferences for superhero powers than high school females? Answering this statistical question involves collecting data as well as anticipating the variability in the data collected. The data consists of two responses from each student completing a survey. The first response indicates a student's gender, and the second response indicates a student's favorite superpower. For example, data collected from one student was male and to fly. The data are bivariate categorical data. The first step in analyzing the statistical question posed by the students in their mathematics class is to organize this data in a two-way frequency table. A two-way frequency table that can be used to organize the categorical data is shown below. The letters below represent the frequency counts of the cells of the table. So here we have female, male, and total. Freeze time, female, freeze time, male, freeze time, total. And we do that for all of these. So we can total up how many females there were by counting how many there were to, uh, females to fly, females who well, preferred to freeze time, and so on. And that would be the total number of females here, total number of males here, and our total population would be where R is. Okay, so the shaded cells are called marginal frequencies. They are located around the margins of the table and represent the totals of the rows or columns of the table. The non-shaded cells within the table are called joint frequencies. Each joint cell is the frequency count of responses from the two categorical variables located by the intersection of a row or a column. So for example, if I just chose J, I would know that that was males who chose super strength. Okay, page three brings us to the exercises five through 12. So I will bring in the table from the prior page. We don't have to flip back and forth and answer the questions involved. Okay, so here we go. Exercise five through 12. Number five says to describe the data that would be counted in cell A. So cell A is right here. And that would be females who chose fly as their superpower. 
Okay, so that's a little bit neater than my writing, so I'll do that from now on. Okay, so number six, describe the data that we counted in cell J. J is right here. So you go over here, it's dealing with males and super strength. So it's males who chose super strength. Okay, so cell J represents the number of males who chose super strength. Number seven says to describe the data that would be counted in cell L. That is right here. So that is males total. Okay, so cell L represents the total number of males who completed the survey in this sample. Okay, moving on to number eight, describe the data that would be counted in cell N, and it's right here. Oh, I already used this color, so let's get rid of that and choose green. So now we're talking about cell N. So that was freeze time, and it was a total. Okay, so cell N represents the total number of students who chose freeze time as their favorite superpower. Number nine says to describe the data that is represented by cell R. R is, hey, I changed the color. R is right here. Okay, total, total. All right. Okay, so cell R represents the total number of students in the sample. Number 10, cell I. Okay, so let me stop and mark I. And let's do, do a color we haven't used yet. How about a really nice bright green, cell I. Cell I is the number of male students who selected invisibility as their favorite superpower. Males who selected invisibility. Using the information given in example one, what is the value of that number? Okay, so for that I'm going to have to go back to the last page. Or was it two pages before? Okay, so now we are looking for invisibility. So now I want to look here. Invisibility is right here. Okay, so the question was cell I is the number of male students who selected invisibility as their favorite superpower. Using the information given in example one, what is the value of this number? Okay, so there were 75 total and 48 were female and we want to know how many males. So do the math. And the answer is 27. Okay, so 27 males selected invisibility. Moving up to 11. Cell D is the number of females whose favorite superpower is super strength. Cell D, right here, females, super strength. Correct? Using the information given in example one, what is the value of this number? So we want to know females super strength. Go back two pages and let's clean this up a little bit. Okay, and choose my pen. Super strength. So let's see. Super strength. Fly, freeze time, invisibility. Super strength is here. Okay, so 26 students total, 25 are male, therefore obviously the female had to have been one. Okay, so it's one. Okay, so one female selected super strength. Okay, page four brings us to problem number 12. It says complete the table below by determining the frequency count for each cell based on the summarized data. All right, so I copied the summarized data from two pages back, and so now we will fill this in. Okay, here goes. Okay, had to get my 
pen little thingy here. Alrighty. 100 students indicated their favorite power was to fly. So that's a total. So fly total was 100. 49 of those were female. 49 goes here. So 100 minus 49 is 51. Okay, so that was the first one. Now I'll do the next one in green. 131 students selected the power to freeze time as their favorite power. Freeze time, 131 was the total. 71 of those students were male. Okay, so that would leave 131 minus 71 is 60 males. So these values have to add up. 60 plus 71 must equal 131. 49 plus 51 must equal 100. Same with all of these columns. And then when we do the rows, the row totals have to be the correct. And then they all have to match column row total has to be the same. So if they aren't, there was a, a mathematical error somewhere. Okay, so 75 students selected invisibility as their favorite power, and that is a total, 75. 48 of those students were female. 48 were female. So that would leave us with 27 males. Next one, 26 students indicated super strength as their favorite power. 26 was a total. 25 of those students were male, so obviously the other one was female. 25 plus one is 26. Okay, now moving on to the last one. And finally, 118 students indicated telepathy as their favorite power. So that's a total, 118. 70 of those students were female, okay? So 30 would give us a 100 and another 18, so that'd be 48. 70 plus 48 is 118. Okay, so now we need to add up the rows. 0 plus 1 is 1, plus 8 is 9, plus 9 is 18. So my last number is 8, and I'm going to carry a 1. 7 plus 1 is 8. I've already used the ones. I'm in tens position now. 7, 8, plus 4 is 12, plus 6 is 18, plus 4 is 22. Carry the 2, and it would be 228. Okay, I just changed the color. I didn't want to use uh, black for my total over here because I already used it here. So I'm using orange. All right, so... 8 plus 5 is 13, plus 7 is 20, plus 1 is 21, plus 1 is 22. So that's, hey, um, I changed it to orange. All right, let's try that again. All right, so that ended up with a 2, I think. 8, 13, 22, carry the 2, put it right there. 4 plus 2 is 6, 8, 10, 17, 22. Okay, so there were 228 females, 222 males. 8 plus 2 is 10, carry the 1. 2 plus 2 is 4, plus that 1 is 5, and 2 plus 2 is 4. So therefore, there were a total of 450 students in this survey. Okay, page five brings us to the end of lesson nine. Review the lesson summary and go to your problem set.